It can be really confusing knowing exactly how to fund your whole life insurance policy. In this video, we're gonna be talking about different ways that you can fund your policy for different time frames, utilizing different features inside of the policy to help you accomplish your goals. There's no one right way to do this, but the beautiful thing about a properly designed whole life insurance policy is that it's gonna be a lot more flexible than most people realize, and you're gonna be completely in control of the options every single year that you move forward with it. So, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell, that way you're notified every time I launch a new video, because we got videos like this coming out every single day. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180, and we're gonna be talking about different ways to fund your whole life insurance policy today. And, uh, you know, it's there's a lot of elements to this. I'm gonna try to cover as much as I possibly can. I put together four different illustrations, and um, it uh, is just, I, I tried to cover the best elements of the policies. I try to kind of think about, all right, what are the different variables and features that most people deal with. I'm not gonna say this is a fully comprehensive cover everything kind of video, but I think it'll give you, if you're if you're looking into this for yourself or if you're an agent trying to figure out like what, what kind of things do I need to consider, I think this stuff will help. So without further ado, let's just kind of do this. I'm gonna just pop myself up in the corner here. We're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna look up at my display monitor up here and get into this. So, all right, so you can see here, I've got different things here. So we got a limited pay, pay through 75 example. So this is interesting. Um, so full transparency, actually, before I do this, let me, let me do this. Um, I, I do wanna say this, as I'm showing you this 75 pay, one of the things that I wanna say is there are different ways that you can fund a policy. Uh, you can pay it through 100. There's some companies that have like L95 policies, meaning like Life 95, you pay through the age of 95. Um, this policy that we're looking at here um, is a policy that is fully paid up at 75. There's other policies that we have access to that are fully paid up at 65. There are ways that you can pay up a policy in a 10 year period. It's a 10 pay policy. There's 15 pays, there's 20 pays. You can do 12 pay, like there's all sorts of flexibilities in it and some benefits that come with those flexibilities and some negatives. And so we're gonna go through this. And so I guess I, I wanted to clarify that before getting into all of this, you know, all this stuff. So the first one we're looking at here is this uh, 75 pay, right? It's the L75 effectively, uh, where you pay through 75 years old. Now, full transparency, you could see, I did this on a 40 year old, and you could see here that, you know, with a 40 year old, you're looking at a $20,000 a year premium, um, and it gives you $366,000 of death benefit, Year one, you got 16,191 of net cash value. That's great. Um, I used a 20 year term rider on here. The reason I didn't go, I could have gone longer uh, and it could have gone, I could have gone a 30 year term rider and it just would have increased the insurance. It would have had a drag on the cash value. I didn't do that. Plus I figured most people are gonna wanna retire earlier. Their cash flow is gonna be a little you know, less. And so we wanted some flexibility. So. At that point in time, I took the paid up additions off because I had to because the term rider expired, so it didn't let me put any more money into the policy. This is what I would call a maximum efficient contract, um, you know, as far as cash value growth goes. And then what we're talking about here is you have the base coverage of the policy um, uh, going from there out until the policy is fully paid at age 75. Now, um, that said, not everybody wants to pay this long, right? Like a lot of people, and the beautiful thing is, once again, I said you as the policyholder are completely in control of this, right? So like, let's imagine that you start this policy and you think, hey, you know, I, uh, I like this and it would be great in a perfect world if I could pull this off, but let's say I can't pull this off. What happens if something happens to me uh, in my cash flow, and I'm not able to maintain this $20,000 a year premium until I'm 60 years old. Okay, let's talk about that. So here's an example, and I, I kind of dumbed it down, um, and what we did is I, I added a seven-year term rider on this one. Um, so it's a little different. I, I guess it would be if I if I kept the 20-year term rider, the term insurance would have would have stayed there. But um, what we have here is a paid-up policy, a reduced paid-up. So this is the same um, situation where because of the uh, smaller 
term rider, the shorter term rider, the cost of the term insurance are less. So therefore the cash value is going to have a little more at the beginning and the death benefit's going to be a little smaller because the term rider isn't as big. Um, but here's the bottom line. What we're looking at here is this is the same policy effectively from a premium, the $20,000 a year premium perspective as that one. The difference is at once the policy hits seven years old, you get through the seven pay test. Now you can do what's called a reduced paid up option. Now what you see here is the $544,000 gets dropped down from death benefit all the way to 289. Now you have $149,000 of cash value and you have no more premiums going in. Now I know a lot of people are used to looking at index universal life insurance and looking at illustrations and maybe they would have an IUL agent f show a the funding of $20,000 for seven years and then zeros after that. But the bottom line is within, in an IUL situation, that policy is never fully paid up. There's always costs coming out of the cash value over here to fund the $20,000 premium. It's just all happening in the background. That's the challenge with that. With this policy, the beautiful thing is, this is completely paid up. Worst case scenario, if you could get through this for seven years and you can get to this point, this becomes like a bank account on steroids. Because look at this, at year six, Okay, what I'm showing you here, this is just pure leverage. You can see you have more money than you've contributed in the policy. You've contributed a, at, at the end of uh, year seven, right here, you contributed 140, you have 143 and you have the death benefit, right? So that's fantastic. But then year eight here, you have, uh, you have $6,348 of growth right here and divided by 149,713, that's 4.2 percent growth. Okay, so you got a policy right here at year seven or at year eight. You can reduce paid up it, and it's going to grow by 4.2 percent. And there's no more costs, there's no more fees, there's no more expenses, there's no more anything in this policy. It is just wildly efficient for what you have going on. And so from that perspective, to me. Uh, you can see the death benefit is going to keep growing because we're utilizing the dividends to buy paid up additions. And that's fantastic. Now, here's the thing. I showed this being reduced paid up at year seven, at the end of year seven. The reason I did that is because it's the soonest you could do it. But if we go back to this example here and we look at, okay, obviously the cash value, if we could keep funding it, it would be even better. So imagine, you know, what I showed you at reduced paying up this policy at the end of year seven, we could do that at year 11 in this policy if we wanted. I just showed it doing it the fastest you possibly can. But once again, you as a policyholder are in complete and utter control of this policy. You can do this in year seven and every year thereafter, heck, every month thereafter, you could make this happen um, all the way until 75 years old, right? Now that is, that's another way to look at this, right? Is like you having the ability to reduce paid up. Now, let me talk to you about the negatives about reduced paid up. And the negatives of the reduced paid up policy has to do with the living benefits. Because you could see here, one of, the, one of the things that I think is the most under talked about, one of the most important features of a properly designed whole life insurance contract are the living benefits features inside of the policy. So as soon as you do a reduced paid up version, you lose the living benefits, right? Now that is, that's tricky for a lot of people, right? And when you lose those living benefits, that can be a challenge because you could see here, you have these living benefits, which is access to the death benefit in an accelerated version while you're alive to pay for medical expenses, to pay for whatever you want, quite frankly. And so you can, you can, you get advanced payments of the death benefit and you can see they cut off at the end of your seven because of the fact that you, um, you know, did the reduce paid up. Now, if I go over to the full pay one, this is what I want to show you. These are the same, same features, right? Supplemental accelerated death benefit plus report, right? So you can see here, we, we're going to most likely need this as we get older, as we age, right? So the um, chronic illness, if you, be, if you lose two of six daily living activities or become cognitively impaired, imagine when you're 60 years old, you get access to the death benefit, $690,000 of the death benefit while you're alive for alternative treatments if you want. I've shared my story with my, about my father-in-law and his pancreatic cancer and utilizing natural treatments to help him with that. It's a, this is a, a thing that's near and dear to my heart and I think this is one of those areas that people misunderstand and when you reduce pay up a policy, 
um, this can be a negative consequence, right? Like you just need to understand that, yes, it's gonna operate efficiently from a banking perspective, right? From a banking alternative perspective uh, and an emergency fund and all that stuff, but you are gonna lose these long-term benefits. And at the end of the day, um, the older I get, and the more life experience I have, the more I realize how important these benefits are. I would argue that these benefits are equally as important as a death benefit for a lot of people. Not everybody, but for a lot of people. And, and I think that's really important to wrap your head around and sit and think about like, how are you prepared to deal with any kind of tragedy that happens to you when you're in retirement, any kind of medical challenges, any health crisis, anything of that nature? Are you gonna be able to show up the way that you want to and handle your medical treatment? Are you gonna be in real control or are you gonna to have to rely strictly on what the insurance company will and won't let you do and you're gonna be completely at their disposal to do the kinds of treatments um, that, that they insist on you doing, right? Like that's my question to you. And so that, you know, you can see when you compare these two um, policies side by side, it's not even close, right? Now, let's go to another area. I use this as an area, uh, as an example, it's called the premium offset, okay? So a premium offset is simply saying, we're gonna use the dividends uh, and surrender, uh, the partial surrenders and dividends to pay the premiums. Now see, unlike the reduced paid up, and I just showed this happening at age 61, what I would say is this has a $4,000 base policy. So we could say here, as soon as the dividends are higher than the base, so starting in year seven, that's possible. We could do this premium offset starting earlier. Once again, that would have a negative impact on the cash value growth. It's okay if that's what you want. Um, once again, I think best practices, because when you look at this and you say, hey, year eight, I'm contributing $20,000. Um, it's growing by 24,945, so almost $25,000. Uh, you know, like I, to me, this is operating really efficiently. It's like a savings account on steroids with other benefits, the death benefits growing bigger. Um, it is what it is. But maybe you hit 61 and you don't wanna come out of pocket for cash flow anymore. You wanna retire, but you don't wanna reduce paid up it because you don't wanna lose the living benefits that we talked about because you just got to this point. The last thing you wanna do is RPU, the policy at 61 years old, right? When you may be needing the benefits the most. So what this is showing is you can um, utilize uh, the dividends and a partial surrender. Um, so what this is showing is actually is using a surrender of the policy, surrender the cash value to pay for the premium. And that's fine because that doesn't incur loans and there's no tax consequence because um, you have up to cost basis to manage it all. And the way this is funded, it's no problem at all, right? And so what you have here is you don't, this premium is getting paid, but it's not getting paid out of pocket. You're paying with surrenders of the cash value to pay the premium. But look at this, even by surrendering this $4,000, you're still, you still have cash value that's growing. You still have a death benefit that's growing. And so it's growing just by a little less, right? Because you're using this amount to pay the premiums and that's still totally fine because now when we go down here, what you'll see is you still have all the benefits. These are all the living benefits. You still have access to these, you know, you're 65 uh, and you need, uh, you need $500,000 for alternative treatment. Uh, if you want to get access to actually up to, if you, if you wanted it, you could get $803,000 in a lump sum, right? And it's pretty big. You get 869 if you get terminally diagnosed with a, with a cancer that you know, you're diagnosed with, I think 20, uh, 12 months or less to live, right? So it's, it's just having that premium offset, you can, once again, I showed this at 61 years old going, in, in, going into uh, place, but you could actually do this earlier. You could do this way up here um, in you know, your 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Full transparency, I probably wouldn't use this feature before year 10, if, if possible. You could use it right up here uh, you know, in, your, in year eight. You could do the same thing. Heck, you could actually do this year six if you wanted to. It's possible, you could pull that off. Um, would I suggest it? I would not suggest that, um, but you can do it. Uh, it's so, it, it, but you gotta realize $4,000 if you're surrendering it to pay, it's a much higher percentage of the 118,000 versus 4,000 out of the 588 here. So it is gonna have a different impact on the policy. You just gotta understand it. Um, and, and these are the, the things that you gotta make sure you're working with an agent who understands all your options that when you hit this time, once again, you could hit your eight right here and you could say, listen, Chris, my cash flow has kind of gotten 
has gotten tight and uh, I can't afford the 20, what are my options? And we could look at maybe we reduce the amount of premium based on the design, you have the ability to do that. Uh, maybe you want to do the RPU, maybe you want to do a premium offset, but we got to look at all the different options for you. And at the end of the day, most agents just are not doing that. They're, they're not coaching people. They're not there to support them uh, for those things. They don't, you know, they're, they're, they don't understand it themselves, quite frankly. And so that is what it is. Now, let me show another one that we, we don't do a lot of these. And I'm going to show you why. Um, but this is a 10 pay. So here's the thing. This is a 10 pay policy. Um, once again, $20,000 premium that is, you can see is not as liquid, right? So you lose a little liquidity with a 10 pay policy on the fur front end of the policy, right? Like, so instead of the other one, we had 16,000, this one only has 10,000. You could see by year 10, you're still in about the same place, but the difference between that other policy and this one, and this is fully paid up in a limited fashion at 10 years. And at 10 years, you once again, now have a bank account on steroids. And you can see that, um, let's take a look at this. So at year 11 here, um, 9,946 divided by 33, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 232, 381. And you're looking at 4.3% almost of return in this policy. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about a bank account on steroids. And so this policy becomes fully paid up and the benefit of doing this way, if you think there's a chance that you're gonna short pay a policy, a 10 pay can be great because what's gonna happen is um, you don't, you're not gonna have the liquidity on the front end, but remember there's, <laughs> there's no free lunch in this life, right? There's no free lunch and especially the insurance game. There's always a cost of everything and if you want the liquidity that comes at a cost and if you wanna, if you're willing and able to give up a little liquidity, which I think most people are, uh, because I'm a big believer you can't solve long-term problems with short-term thinking. And so if, if I knew, if I told you, you know, you're not losing that money, you're just giving up a little liquidity because you can look at year 10, you're still about the same place as the other policies. But now we go down here and when we look at the living benefits report, the accelerated benefit um, plus report, you go down here and you still have access to living benefits for managing your medical directive, disability, long-term care, uh, utilizing it for critical, chronic, and terminal kind of situations. You have this there to help you. And you know, this is, this is just really important stuff to understand is, is just your different options. And that's why when people say, hey, Chris, what's the best way to design a policy? I always say you gotta align and design the policy uh, so it's in alignment with your values and beliefs. Because at the end of the day, nothing else matters. It's got, the policy has to be designed to fit your goals and objectives. And if it's not, it's not a good policy. It, you know, it might be a 1090 policy. It might be a 4060 policy. It might be a front loaded policy. That's hundred percent based aside from that. I don't know, right? Like it, it just is a matter of, of, of you and you building your level of understanding so you can make an educated decision that fits your goals and objectives. And that's, our job is to not sell you something, but to educate you. And that's why, you know, that's why I'm, 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 you know, I got hit with this thing the other day is like, there's so many people marketing whole life insurance right now and infinite banking. And like, I get it. I love it. Like I do some of that myself. I'm not going to say I'm above that, right? Like we all kind of do that to a certain extent, but I'm really kind of on a mission right now. And you probably have seen this in my content lately where it's like, all right, let's start doing less marketing and more educating because the world needs education right now with all the uncertainty in the banks and all these things going on in the world right now, people want certainty. If we can't rely on the banks, well, the banks and corporations have more money in whole life insurance than anybody else combined. All the other humans on the earth combined don't have as much as banks and corporations and so the largest corporations in the country. So to me, if they're keeping their money inside of life insurance companies, well, that's where I want to keep my money is with that. And you can see why, because once again, when we go back, you know, when we go back just to this policy right here and we, and we look at the, you know, we look at the, the leverage once we let it mature a little bit and we go, wow, this has got the cash, it's gonna grow at 4.3% almost, and I've got a death benefit that goes with it, and I'm gonna get living benefits that go with it. Why would I ever wanna keep money in a bank after that, right? Like, it just makes no sense. 
you know? And that's not strictly an infinite banking conversation. That's just a financial leverage conversation. That's just a financial efficiency conversation. The infinite banking stuff will come in based on how you wanna utilize a policy for loans and how you are gonna behave with the policy. But even if you did nothing else, if you believe you need an emergency fund, if you believe in CDs, if you believe in safe money, I don't know anywhere else that's gonna give you a 4.3% return long-term, give you additional leverage from a tax-free death benefit, give you tax-free growth, and give you living benefits while you're in retirement. I don't know, a f like somebody who's 40 years old, there's not another product in the world that you can put your money in that's gonna solve all those different problems the way that whole life insurance does. And that's why, you know, it drives me nuts when people like Dave Ramsey do what they do and they, and they bash it saying it's the worst thing in the world because he just either doesn't understand it or he's lying to people. I don't know what the difference is. I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago uh, because it, it's just mind blowing to me. It's mind numbing. So anyway, I hope this helps. Um, you know, just, it, it really is about the full pay, the limited pay, and a limited pay could be at 75. A limited pay, pay could be a 10 pay, it could be a 15 pay, a 20 pay. You could do an RPU, you could do premium offset. There's all these different things. Just know that you are in control. Some of the decisions you have to make at the very beginning of the policy, and some of them you have control, right? Throughout the policy, the RPU and the, and the premium offset, you have control about that through, about how you're gonna handle it year by year as you go through the policy. The other stuff, if you wanna choose a limited pay, that's gonna be based on the product that you select, right? And so you need to choose that up front. If you wanna do a 10 pay, or if you wanna do a 75 pay, you know, pay through 75, or if you're willing to do a full pay policy, totally up to you, but those are the choices that you have to make at the beginning. Make sure you work with somebody who has access to multiple companies that can find, you know, multiple products and service, multiple needs that can help you. And if you are interested, if you'd like to work with us, if you'd like to have a free clarity call, I'd be honored uh, to be entrusted with that responsibility and have our team help you with that. Go down in the link below, uh, for, schedule your free clarity call. Uh, one of our guys can help you do it. One of our team members, I shouldn't say guys because they're not all guys. So one of our team members can help you, uh, can help you through that process. And um, you know, I, I, I think, I just believe in this so much that I believe every single person should try uh, to look and you know, lift up the stone and see what's underneath and see how it can have a positive impact in your life and where it may fit. So that's it for now. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell that we're notified every time I launch a new video. Until next time, have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.